So radioactive elements, whatever we are using, whatever we're working with, they have to be, uh, you can say, uh, properly disposed before we can move on to the next thing or before we can move on to the next project. You see, the overexposure, the first we identify the problem, what happens if you don't do that? Radiation burns, redness of the skin and sores on the skin. So mainly caused by beta and gamma radiation because alpha radiation generally doesn't go that far. And even if you do receive it, uh, it's very likely that your clothes will absorb it. Only, well, probably only your hands or the face or the exposed parts of the body might be affected by that. But it's very unlikely because alpha has a very small range, even for a high energetic particle. So this radiation burn is caused by beta and gamma radiation, right? Because they do have a heating effect. And part B is sterility, the inability or uh, to produce children. And then we have genetic mutation because the radiation actually disturbs the RNA structures generally. The DNA that is responsible for copying the next part of the DNA. So it actually, it actually sometimes affect the process the RNA is trying to produce or is trying to do. And we end up with a bad copy of a DNA. That bad copy of a DNA, if replicates itself, that becomes cancer. And uh, leukemia, again, blood cancer, and then blindness by formation of cataracts in the eye, right? So all of these are just a few side effects of overexposure of radiation. Uh, they are not always going to be there, but some of them under extreme conditions will be visible to that respective patient. Uh, if we want to prevent from all of these, if you want to uh, make sure that all the personnel are safe whoever is operating on the screen or whoever is operating on the uh, part of the reactor at that stage, what measures they can take so that they don't experience all of this, uh, they should use tongs and forceps to actually deal with the radioactive source because it is enclosed in a very small container. The radioactive source itself, even for the sake of experimentation, is enclosed in a very tiny apparatus. Only a few atoms or only a few milligrams of the sample is good enough for at least the testing purpose. So it is enclosed in a very small container which can easily be picked up by forceps, whoever is operating on them. Uh, recently what they've done is instead of coming directly in contact with the radioactive element, what they do is they use ro robots uh, to do that purpose. Just like uh, you can say using a joystick or a computer program, they can program a robot to do or to replicate whatever they're trying to do. So they just pick it up just like a crane system, and then wherever they want to place it, they will place it over there. Just for the sake of experimentation, of course. And even moving large uh, uranium uh, fuel cells into the nuclear reactor and removing the old ones, they, they are done by uh, robotic uh, equipment. So handlers should be wearing rubber gloves and hands should be washed thoroughly with soap after the experiment. As you see, washing does not Actually, it's not going to help you with radi radiation. It just makes sure that no radioactive material is actually on your skin, left out, or has clinged to your skin after you've done with the experiment. Even with the rubber gloves, there could be a small cut in the rubber gloves, and from that cut, it's possible that on your hands, you, will, you may have a small sample still sticking to your fingers that will eventually cause the radiation uh, poisoning. So that is why we wash the hands afterwards. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't do anything else other than just get rid of the material that probably be picked up by our hands. And rubber gloves should be lined with lead. Lined with lead. Lead gloves. Lead-lined gloves, we use that. Because we experience that lead can absorb gamma. If skin, it can absorb gamma. Then, of course, it can also stop alpha and beta from reaching our skin. All radioactive sources should be kept in a thick lead container. Again, due to the same idea. And this is not for the uh, fuel or not for the elements that are not used right now. This is also for the elements or byproducts of the radioactive experiments. For example, if in a, a nuclear power plant, when the uranium is used up as fuel, whatever the byproducts are, they are still inside that fuel cell. So that is still radioactive. So what they do is they store them in lead containers and then dump them into the ground hoping that it will not cause anything else. But of course, that is also participating in the background radiation. And not only that, but it is also eventually one day going to add up into our food stream. Because everything dumped in the ground, rainwater seeps it down, and then eventually it can happen. So that is why nuclear power plants are not the source of energy for the future.
So never point a radioactive source at a person. You are not supposed to point a radioactive source towards a person, even as a prank or even as just for the sake of uh, humor. This is extremely dangerous and it will eventually cause cancer and lead to the death of a person. So they are, they are not to be messed with. Uh, while highly radioactive materials handlers would work with robotic arms, you can see that we have discussed this point already. There is one more thing that uh, you may have seen this in movies and shows. The hazmat suit, right? So you may have seen this as a yellow suit in some movies or shows that is also lined with lead. It's not only uh, against bio uh, uh, biological things, it is also against radioactive things as well. So it is completely sealed. Uh, no air or no air can enter or exit. And also since it is lined with lead or lead-based paint, it is very difficult for the radiation to actually pass through it. So that's a good idea to at least wear that if you're going to work in that vicinity or an area. So that is all for the radioactive safety measures. First, the, the thing that we covered was what overexposure can do, what's the problem. And then we looked at the fact that how to avoid all of these problems.